Hey you folks, Quillateen here and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Aurora 4X. We have completed our very first vessel. So as I said at the end of the last episode, I would just advance time a little bit. It is April 21st of 2024 and our very first Speedy Savant class ship has been built. This one is the Speedy Savant, it's the class namer. And Commodore Elizabeth Mystery has been assigned to command it because she has a 40% survey bonus. So they're gonna be able to survey things that much faster. That happened automatically, which is nice. Notice there's a new blip on the screen over here. We've got Shuka, 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 shuka. This little yellow label here, Shipyard Task Group. So when you build a ship, and in fact, I'm going to start another one of these Speedy Savants over here from Managed Shipyard, Sarvos Shipyard. We're going to order up another Speedy Savant. This one is going to be called the... The <laughs> Mofo Spartan. The Mofo Spartan. So we're going to go ahead and add you. So we add a name, but you'll notice it also has a task group selected here. Currently, we only have one task group, the Shipyard Task Group. So basically... This shipyard task group is just a, um, a temporary task group that is always going to be in orbit around Earth here. And we're just going to build ships into that task group. And they're going to sit there until they get assigned to their real job. So we're going to go ahead and add in the Mofo Spartan to the queue. So that'll take a while. And now we want to take our ship. I mean, we want to start exploring with it. The whole idea... I mean, it's already in Earth orbit, which is a big deal. It's cool. Oh, can you just like, ah, the visuals. Can you imagine how cool this ship must look? It's got the twin engines and you know, just use your imagination. So um, it's currently in this task group. What we're going to want to do is we want to move it into a proper task group because we want to leave the shipyard task group here. We're going to make it into its own task group and then we're going to send it off on a mission. So what you want to do is click on the button in the toolbar that looks like a Star Destroyer over here. These are fleet orders. This is where you control all your task groups over here. And again, currently we only have one task group over here and it, this task group only has one ship in it, the GEV Speedy Savant, which has 100% fuel, no ammo, no shield, has a certain thermal signature, how much heat this ship generates, which uh, with this ship is mostly a factor of its engines, um, which is, this is a relatively low, low number because these are relatively weak engines. It has a certain amount of maintenance supplies. Now, we didn't talk about this too much, but the different one of the big differences between a military vessel and a commercial vessel is a commercial vessel literally can never break down. Basically, it is abstracted to an extent that because all the commercial ves vessels have to be built a little bit bigger, a little bit less dense, it's assumed, you know, they've got extra supplies, extra crew to work it, do that sort of thing. And their stuff is made, it's, their, their technology is not the same sort of like cutting edge craziness. It's more like sort of slightly lower tech proven stuff that's not going to break down as often. The end result is commercial vessels don't have to be micromanaged in terms of maintenance. So these maintenance supplies will actually never get used up for the Speedy Savant. Um, Neither will the maintenance clock be an issue. This field is interesting. This is the crew months. This is basically how long the crew has been in space. When this counter exceeds the ship's design time for mission length, which has got to be... Oh, it's got to be somewhere here. It's probably under one of the other tabs. I don't think it's listed here. But remember, we designed this ship to last 10 years, so 120 months. So if at any point this counter here went above 120 months, the morale would start to drop, which means they would do survey scanning uh, slower. We just have to bring them back to Earth, have them sit in orbit for a little while, give them a little bit of shore leave, and that would be fine. Uh, and then the grade bonus and task force training isn't going to come up. These are not military ships. We don't care about training them up for combat. So what we want to do is we want to move this into its own task group. It's going to be a task group of, well of one ship. It's just gonna operate on its own, but it's still, you give orders to task groups, so we need to split it off on its own. There's a couple of different ways to do it. You can go to the special orders slash organization tab, and from here, if we had multiple task groups, you could choose one over here and then move ships over from one side to the other. You can also click here and you can use split task group and divide task group. The difference between these two is split task group will take all the ships that have been selected in this list here, and create a new task group with those ships. And it'll be called, I don't know, like new task group 001 or something like that. With divide, it basically does the same, but the ones that are selected stay in this task group and everything else that's not selected moves into a new one. So we could use this, but what I like to do, especially for these things that go on their own, is as long as they're selected up here, um, which they don't highlight, but they're selected, you can then click detach. You don't actually have to select it over here. You can click detach. And what it does is it moves this one ship alone 
into its own task group and it also calls by default it names the task group after the ship you can rename the task group whenever you want with the button down here rename task group but with these solo ships that operate on their own i like just having the task group name be equal to the ship name it's gonna be groovy love that very happy with that so our speedy savant is here it's in its own task group we can give it some orders for example well why don't we have it go to the moon so by default this only shows planets um and colonies that you have established um so i guess it does count pluto as something not just a planet not just an asteroid but it's not all it doesn't have the normal orbital rings so I'm, I'm not sure oh dwarf planet is a category okay so it does have dwarf planet as its own thing over here so pluto and quar and orcus and eris and all these guys these are all dwarf planets so they show up in the list we can also show moons now for some weird reason i, I don't know if this there's like a good reason for this in game or if it's just a glitch luna which is the moon of the earth in this list shows up under venus i have no idea but we want our ship here the good ship speedy savant we want it to go to luna and scan it so we go to luna we go geological survey and that's it now we can click move to so we've got luna selected i could double click move to or click add move over here to say move to luna and then i could say do a geological survey of luna i don't actually have to do this move too because it's smart enough the game's smart enough i just removed all the moves here if i click on luna and go geological survey what the ship's going to do first it's going to move to the moon because it knows it has to be there so you can just go luna geological survey then do that then why don't we send it to the um the inner solar system right why don't we go ahead and uh send it to uh, to mercury and venus oh i like that idea okay let's go back to our fleet window so we can hide the moons at this point that's fine still has the command over there so we're gonna say hey go to mercury and do a survey there then go to venus and do a survey there now this would get a little tedious especially once you get to the point of having all the asteroids and you want to scan all those obviously we're not going to manually list all these under special orders there's a really cool command here default orders if it has no other orders set we're gonna have a primary order just survey the nearest body this would survey the nearest unsurveyed body so this will automatically once it does it's going to go to the moon it's going to go to mercury then it's going to go to venus then it's go to I don't know, probably one of these asteroids or lesser moons of Earth kind of thing that are buzzing around here. Maybe there'll be a comet that's flying nearby that we can pick up at that point, that sort of thing. It'll do that automatically. You can also give it conditional orders like, hey, if your fuel tanks ever drop below, say, 30%, why don't you just go refuel at the nearest colony, which in this case would be Earth because it's our only colony with fuel. So yeah, if your fuel ever gets below 30%, go and refuel. Excellent. Okay. And this ship, this speedy savant with their brave people will just go and do this on their own for, well, at least 10 years, because that's their mission length. If I double click on the Speedy Savant over here, I'll open the actual individual unit screen, which you can also get from the Romulan Warbird. I think that's what that is over here. Um, that's going to open it up. We can see our ship. We can get those information we just had. We can also see that Commodore Elizabeth Mystery is in charge. She's got that 40% survey bonus. I believe I can double click here. No, I can't really. Okay, so I'm going to have to, if I want to pull her up, I have to go to the commander's view over here. She's a Commodore right over here, Elizabeth Mystery. Um, and then we can get some more information about her. And I believe, can I open up more information? Or do we rename here? Oh yeah, there we go. I could rename Elizabeth here. Should we do that? Sure. Let's go rename you. So you're going to be Dorn Boss Games. Kind of a funny name, but there you go. Dorn Boss Games is now the commanding officer of the good ship Speedy Savant. Okay, Speedy Savant, what we're going to do is we're going to center on Earth. I'm going to zoom in a whole bunch more over here. And we're going to advance by one hour. I'm going to turn off auto turns. We're going to advance by one hour. There you go. It's fast! It's going to take it like an hour and a half to get from the Earth to the moon. And I think, what, Apollo took something like three days to get there? Or is three days the round trip? Is it a day and a half to get there? I don't know. In any case, this is going fast. Faster than any previous Earth ship ever. It's going to make the trip to the moon in an hour and a half. So let's advance one other hour. So it is now parked in orbit around the moon. And now it's saying here, SP needed. 172 point yada yada yada. This is survey points needed. This is how many survey points it's going to have to generate in orbit around the moon to complete its geological survey. This, our, our, our ship generates one survey point per hour so this is going to be 172 hours which is three six about a week eight days maybe something like that so let's skip ahead a day 
There you go, and another one. And actually, as soon as we, we've moved ahead five days, our view is going to change here. And that's because every five days, every five days is when um, industry, science, but also orbits are updated. Just keeps the processing a little bit lower. Remember, we have a, a universe with a thousand systems in it. So it can't, it doesn't update everything every tick. So there we go. So I've just zoomed into the Earth over here. So we're going to wait for it to finish. One more day, 27 hours left, 2.8 hours left. So let's just actually skip three hours ahead. All right, so it's just completed that survey of the moon. And it didn't find anything. How do I know that? Well, it's because this mineral view is only shows the Earth. If, whenever this guy surveys something that's got minerals, it'll add, get added to the list. You can also, um, you can put a little ring, so you get a white ring around bodies that have been surveyed. You can also put a green ring around bodies that have um, minerals. So you can see them at a glance on the view over here. So we got a little bit unlucky, no minerals around the moon. That's too bad because it would be really, really convenient to mine the moon, but it's not gonna happen. So our ship, um, which is still around Earth over here, is gonna make its way over to Mercury and do a scan over there. At this point, I think it's probably fine. Let's go ahead to one day at a time auto turns. So it's gonna take a handful of days to get to Mercury every five turns. The world updates, it moves aside a little bit. And it doesn't predict the motion either. A really slow ship might actually not be able to catch a planet, which is sometimes awkward. So we're gonna scan Mercury over here. Oh, Mercury's got stuff. I can tell because it's got a green ring and it showed up in the list over here. What do you have? You have a lot of things. Now compare the Earth. What do we have the most of on the Earth? Sorium at 336,000 tons. Mercury has got millions of tons of stuff. It has 5.2 million tons of corbamite. We only have 72,000. It also has corbamite with a 100% accessibility, which is nice. Um, it's got lots of other things. It's got lots of duranium, but accessibility is only 0.4, which definitely sucks. But it's got it's got 1.0 corbamite and 0.8 neutronium, which isn't bad. So that primarily we'd be mining those two things. But remember, if you have mines on Mercury, it mines all the minerals simultaneously. So we'll get a slow trickle of iridium, a slow trickle of sorium, um, a really, you know, a half decent trickle in of, of uranium. Not gonna complain about that, certainly. But these two things, mining mercury is definitely gonna be something that we're going to be interested in. Awesome. And in fact, we might end up finding even more stuff later on here because we can actually create a geological survey team, a, a group of people that we will actually put on the surface of mercury. I hope they bring sunscreen. And they can go looking around um, and take a closer look, because this is an orbital look. But we will land that team, and they will be on the surface surveying it, and they might even find more. They might find another mineral. So um, Mercury doesn't have everything. It doesn't have... So there's no tritanium that we know about on Mercury, right? But they might find some. Or they might find more of another mineral. In particular, they might find more accessibility of a mineral, which we would really love. So that's going to be something we're going to do later. We're going to hold off on that uh, for a fair bit of time. Um, because of, of reasons that will become obvious in the future. So we're going to hold off on that, um, until the, the future happens. But for now, we're going to, we're just going to let this thing do its thing. We've got nothing else going on. We're building another ship. We've got some research happening. Uh, we're still working on our industrial production here. Our construction potential has almost doubled. So we've constructed some more factories, so we are improving that. And of course, we're mining a lot faster. We're still predicting a shortfall of uranium, but again, that's because of years and years and years in the future. You know what I'm going to do? I'm actually I'm going to keep the number of factories and mines equal, but I'm going to not build the mines quite as quickly. I'm going to bring its percentage down to 30, which means we have 10% of our industrial capacity unused. But I'm instead going to go and kick up my factory production a little bit. We're gonna we're gonna increase the factory production. We might dial back on it later if we start to discover more shortages, but for now I think I'm gonna be happy with uh, building factories a wee bit faster. Okay, let's go to auto turns. We're gonna go five turn chunks. Speedy Savant, God, like visiting the solar system in a way that no human has ever even been, been able to do before. Ooh, Venus has got some stuff too. What you got? Oh, okay, apparently that's gonna hide that view. What you got, Venus? Um, you have a lot of sorium, 21 million tons of sorium, a little bit of duranium. So Venus could definitely be a, become a fuel refinery source. Um, here's the problem. Okay. I don't think we'd refine the fuel on Venus. I think we'd mine the sorium and then bring it to earth. And then on earth, the sorium would be refined into fuel. There is something you can do instead of mining it that way though. 
Because the thing uh, is, um, you can build automated mines. Automated mines don't need human beings to operate, so you can just drop them on a planet like Venus. Like Venus, we don't want to colonize. Venus is uh, effectively, it's not literally uninhabitable, but in practice, it is completely uninhabitable. You don't, don't want to put people on Venus. Um, we could build orbital habitats, that would be one thing. But certainly with mines, we don't want... So a normal mine, I think, needs 50,000 people to work. Automated mine doesn't need anyone. So we can drop automated mines on Venus, which is fine. And that'll, that'll mine up minerals and accumulate sorium. But fuel refineries, I don't believe there's any automated version of a fuel refinery. We would need people living on Venus to work this. They could work in an orbital habitat, that would be fine. But we could mine the sorium on Venus and then send it over to Earth and then... Um, converted over there. That'd be fine. Nice to have so much sorium there, because sorium shortfalls are definitely something that can happen later on. Um, the thing I was going to say, though, is under... Is under construction production? Yes, you can get a sorium harvester. A sorium harvester is a module you can add to a ship, and you can put the ship in orbit around a gas giant, and what it will do is it will extract sorium from the atmosphere and refine it automatically into one step. It's a beautiful thing. So you get an orbital fuel refinery setup. I believe, though, it is restricted to simply gas giants. So I don't think you're going to be able to use the sorium harvester around Venus. But it makes me really happy that we've got some. Mercury is looking good. Venus is looking good. It makes up for the fact that Earth's mines are... They're not the worst. I've certainly seen some worst um, starts, but they could have been a little bit stronger. Okay. Anyway, uh, let's keep auto-turning. We could probably go 30 days at a time, but... Anything on Mars? There, Mars has some stuff too, wow. I've played a lot of games where there's nothing on Mars. Mars is still generally the first thing you colonize, that or the moon. Okay, Mars effectively has nothing. I mean, it has almost 10 million tons of Vanderite and 9 million tons of Iridium and, you know, and others, but they're all at 0.1 accessibility. Mining this stuff probably isn't worth the effort. We will drop a geological survey team on this later on. Maybe we'll find some richer supplies. Not really. Now, that's interesting. We've actually just done a scan of a, our first comet. Actually, no, we did uh, Borley a little bit earlier. So we've got two comets have been scanned now, Borley and Machholtz. And both of them have minerals. Comets tend to have minerals. They don't tend to have very many, but they tend to be very accessible. Apparently, I'm lying when it comes to both of these. Both of these have a fair amount of minerals. Not that accessible, although the tritanium's not bad. And at 0 0.7, 0 0.8, it's not terrible. It's probably worth mining. And with comets, so they do swing in and out of your solar system. They go really far away. You'll never want to collect the minerals with a ship because half the time the comets are going to be way too far to reach. But that's where something called mass drivers are going to come in, which are a hell of a lot of fun, and we'll see how they work later on. So, keep going for now. Speed Savant getting work done. Um... Dorn Boss scanning very well. Dorn Boss with the 45% boost to survey scans. I think it was 45%. Scanning things considerably faster than otherwise would happen. And there you go. So Speedy Savant's going to keep going. The Mofo Spartan just finished. Commander Joseph Bruce has been assigned with a 15% survey bonus there. So our shipyard task group is shining again. So let's go ahead and do the same thing as before. We're going to select the shipyard task group. Now, selecting the shipyard task group is something that's going to happen very often. I'm going to rename this. It's a cool little trick. Put a little space in front of this so it shows up at the top of the list. It's just going to be a little bit easier. We're going to take the Mofo Spartan. I'm going to detach it so it goes into its own um, task group. And I'm going to give it the same commands. We're going to say, listen, just survey the nearest body. And if your fuel gets below 30%, why don't you return home? Now, if I just let it go now, it would probably go to some asteroids and that would be fine. I might want to go and encourage it to check out these comets that are inside the system. So, Rainmouth and Wolf Harrington are both coming in um, in our direction. So if we just set the filter to comets and we find those, Rainmouth, why don't you go and scan that? And Wolf Harrington, go and scan that. And then after that, what I think I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna send this guy to Jupiter. So he will scan Jupiter and he'll end up scanning all of Jupiter's moons. There's a lot of moons over there and that'll be pretty good. It'll take him a while to get to Jupiter. Jupiter's quite far, and it's not the fastest ship, but I think that's going to be a great little thing for us to do. And then and then it'll just go and do asteroids and whatever it wants, and that's all going to be fine. But I'm quite curious to see what's out there. Um, you'll notice, by the way, it still says Shipyard Task Group over here. It doesn't show you the net new task group. That's because most windows, including the main screen here, doesn't automatically refresh when you make a change. You usually have to close a window and reopen it. In fact, we can do that. Because you remember, this is not the main program window. This is the main program window. So as long as I don't close this, the program is still running. So what I can do is I can close this, and I can reopen this view, and it will have refreshed 
to show me that new title. There's also a little refresh button over here. You can just do that. It'll refresh the screen. It doesn't affect anything. It's just if that was bothering you, you can refresh and then do that. But you can see here, the mofo is going to go to the rain myth thing. Let's click on the sun to recenter our view. So the rain myth comet over here is going to get scanned. Comets scan very quickly. So do asteroids because they're very small. They get scanned insanely fast. So it's just going to pop over here and then he's going to do Wolf Harrington. Oh, rain myth's got some stuff. Again, with comets, I, I, I don't know if I've ever seen a comet that didn't have anything on them. I'm sure there must be, but most comets have minerals. They just don't often have very many, and sometimes they're a little tricky to mine, but there they go. So they're buzzing around all over the place. The Mofo Spartan is going to go to Jupiter, wherever the heck that is. There it is. It's going to scan Jupiter. Now, Jupiter's a gas giant. It won't have any minerals other than sorium, but it should have a lot of sorium. I'm hoping for it. I did see one game where it had like 100,000 tons of sorium, which is insane. I'm hoping for millions. <gasps> we finished pressurized water reactors. Lovely. Also, did we get any more scientists? <sighs> Still no construction person, which is a little bit annoying. I'm going to have Lara continue to work on power and propulsion stuff. Actually, I'm really tempted. We don't have a logistics person either because we need two things in logistics. We're probably going to want cargo handling system and we're definitely going to want cryogenic transport. Okay, we are going to want the new engines, though. So tell you what, Laura, start or Laura, start by researching nuclear thermal engines because we need more powerful engines to move our giant freighters once we start building them. So finish that first, and hopefully, um, by the time we get some research labs, we'll get a logistics person up, and we still want a construction and production person as well. And none of these have uh, skilled up either, I don't think. Ah, uh, no, that's not true. I think Robert Byrd and George Jackson both had 0% skill before. Now they're up to 5%, so that's good. So they are training up. All right, I think we're going to go to 30-day turns. We're not building another ship. I'm not feeling a need. I think these two survey vessels are going to be fine now. I suspect by the time their 10-year mission is over and we have to bring them back to Earth, I think we'll probably scrap them at some point, at that point, and replace them with a single, much faster vessel. I think that's probably what I'm going to do. Industry is still ticking away. We're building those. Construction. So now we started 1,000. Last time I checked, we were at something like 1,800. Now we're making almost uh, 3,000 construction points per year. And so we're building things faster which allows us to build things faster, which will mean we build things faster and so on and so forth. We're also mining more and more and more. Stockpiles are good. Yeah, our mines are definitely keeping pace. I'm happy I went and increased that rate. Um, our fuel production is dropping as we convert more of these things over. And again, at some point we'll have to create some proper fuel refineries, but that can wait for now. Okay, let's go, let's go to 30 day increments. You're gonna be all right. I would get us in a position by the end of this episode so that we can consider doing our first colonies next episode which might require a bit of fast forwarding. Uh, we finished researching our uh, lasers. We'll keep going with energy weapons. Bradley's getting quite good at this sort of thing. Go ahead and we could keep increasing our uh, meson focal size or meson focal size a bit more. That's not a bad idea. We are gonna want better turrets at some point though, if we are gonna use these meson weapons as point defense. Um, so go ahead, Bradley, go ahead and grab the tracking speed. We're gonna need everything. But go ahead and get to work on that. That's going to be fine. All right, let's go back to 30 day increments. I'd be quite curious to see what all the moons. So Mofo Spartan is just buzzing around Jupiter, checking out all Jupiter's moons. It's happening pretty fast over here. There we go. And now it is going back to the asteroid belt. So it's checked out all Jupiter's moons. There's plenty of minerals over there. At some point, you're going to want to stop using this screen. Oh, we got our active grads, uh, grab scanners. Excellent. George, keep working on sensors and fire control. That's going to be great. Um, we are going to need more beam range. So we actually don't have any right now. You know what? Go ahead and start working on the improved geological sensors. <clears throat> That's going to take you forever to do it. But for our next generation of survey ships, it would be nice if they can get the second level of sensor. We don't need guns anytime soon. So I'm going to do that. George is going to be busy for a really, really long time. What is it predicting right now? Um, 66. So it's going to take him, <laughs> it's going to take him 40 years to complete this. We'll probably give him some more labs later. We may pull him off the, uh, hold on. I, I picked the wrong person. Cancel. I clicked on Joel over here. George. Create. At least George is going to get a 20% boost to the tech. So it's going to happen a little bit faster, but not much. 
Actually, it's going to happen slower than with Joel, because Joel had a 30% bonus, and effectively George is working at 20%. But if George gets any more skills, it'll improve. So we're going to do that. We're just It's just busy work for George. That's okay. You know, he's, um, he's, uh, he's, what's the term? Tenured. He's tenured. We can't fire him, so we're just going to stick him in a back office to work on improved geological sensors forever. That's okay. We don't need, we don't need these fancy things yet. We don't need the better guns yet. At some point we will, but not yet. Okay, let's go back to 30 day increments over here. Someone got a medical problem. People are being promoted. Oh, it's been two years, so everyone got reshuffled around. We've completed conversion of our conventional industry to construction factories on Earth. So look at this. Our construction rate is now over 6,000. So what we can do is we could modify, and I think I'm going to do this just for the sake of simplicity. I'm going to modify the mine conversion job to use 100%. So... We'll just power through this. It's going to take, wow, only until October of this year to finish 100 mines. We'll just finish the mine conversion. And then we'll have 100% of our productivity to do something else with. There we go. Mines are done. So now if we look here, we are mining 4,600 tons of each mineral each year, modified by the accessibility. Uh, so now you can see the first thing we're going to run out of will be boronide over here. Because we don't have that much and it's got pretty good accessibility. 11 years we're going to run out of this stuff. We won't be able to mine anymore. It's not so bad because we'll actually have a giant stockpile. We're, we're stockpiling tons of stuff. Duranium is the only, only thing where the stockpile wasn't really growing that quickly. Especially if we start to, now that we've got our improved construction rate, we can burn through this Duranium really fast with certain things. So we have to figure out what we want to do next. First thing I'm going to do is build a commercial shipyard. <sighs> yeah, I'm going to do that because the commercial shipyard will be built. It'll have a capacity of 10,000 tons. And then we're going to have to upgrade that capacity to at least 35,000 to build the freighters that I'm going to want to build. So we're going to build that first so it's in place to be able to upgrade. Then I'm going to queue up. We're going to need another, um, another military academy so we can continue to get more leaders, especially the scientists. Because our scientists, <laughs> we, we have what? Four of our possible eight fields represented here or something like that? It's, it's pretty terrible. So we'll get another military academy. We'll get more people graduating that. Excellent. After that... I think we're probably going to get set up for maybe a little bit of strip mining. Well, it's hard to say. We're not running out of minerals yet. We may not have to worry about starting the um, mining of asteroids quite yet. We might want to set up a colony first. If we set up a colony first, we're going to want infrastructure as a first thing. If we set up mining first, we're definitely going to need a mass driver and automated mines set up. So sort of six and one half dozen the other. I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually I'm going to go ahead and build two mass drivers. So mass drivers are basically giant slingshots that can fling rocks through space. So instead of building freighters to move minerals back and forth between asteroids and comets and, and sending them to Earth, you can actually just have a mass driver on an asteroid that will fling the material to Earth. You need to make sure that your destination has its own mass driver, otherwise you're going to kill millions and millions and millions of people. So there always needs to be a mass driver on Earth to catch it. Uh, but we'll get a couple of those, and then we'll get a big pool of automated mines ready to go. Um, Venus is going to be, and Mercury are really good mining targets. We could support a lot. We could do something like 100 automated mines. And ship them all over. This will delay our colonization, though. That's the only downside. Still, I think it's a good idea. Um, do we need this many? You know, you know what? We might, rather than mining Mercury and Venus, we'll probably end up mining a comet or an asteroid first. And there's reasons to that for, for that related to geological survey team stuff. We're not going to get into that. But let's assume we want to start off with asteroid mining. I mean, we are not that far away in real life from being able to mine some asteroids or do something like that. So let's assume that's what we're going to do first. So we're going to build a mass driver for Earth. We're going to build another one that we're going to ship out to an asteroid later on. And then we're going to create, I don't know. We don't want, we're probably not going to want to put 100 automated mines on there. We'll probably plan on something like 50 automated mines for that. So these are all being queued up. Each one of these jobs is going to use up 100% capacity. Oh, something uh, we're going to have to build at some point are more fuel refineries. We're no longer refining any fuel whatsoever. We have enough in reserves to handle our tiny little ships, but we will want more. So after these get done, let me go ahead and build uh, something like 20 fuel refineries on Earth. Make sure that's working again. And then after that, we're going to get started on infrastructure. Our infrastructure will be used to build, again, those biodomes and things on Mars and the moon so we can colonize these other planets. How much are we going to want? Quite a bit. Something like maybe like 2,000 units. And there's going to be a reason for that. There's math. Once you set up a colony, we could set up a colony on Mars now. Quote, unquote, colony, it would be empty. It wouldn't do anything. We could set it up now, and it would show us 
how much infrastructure we need per million people. I believe on Mars, we're gonna need 200 infrastructure per million people. So with 2000 infrastructure, that means we could support a population on Mars of 10 million people, which isn't that much, but it's certainly enough to get them kickstarted. So something like this, I think this is a good production queue. I think I'm gonna be very, very happy with that. Let's take a look at our shipyards. I don't think I'm gonna build another Speedy Savant. Um, Sarvath, I think it's probably fine if we went and added a bit more capacity to you. Let's go and increase um, your capacity um, by another couple of thousand tons, just as sort of future proofing, because we may as well keep you busy. We're gonna do that. We might add an extra slipway at some point too, just again, for a little bit of future proofing. Research is going fine. And we've got our scans going on. So I think we've really got nothing else to do right now. Uh, we're, we're doing a bit of like token research. The uh, nuclear thermal engines will actually be really nice for our cargo ships. Um, and we will want the cryogenic tech in the not too distant future. You know what? So we don't have a logistics specialist. Hang on. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to cancel the, fur the, uh, the turret tracking speed and I'm going to cancel the implosion fission warhead. Instead, I'm going to go to logistics. We're going to start working on cryogenic transport. I'm just going to assign Bradley to it. Um, actually, we'll use Joel, just because I'm very unlikely to want to use his specialization relatively soon. So Joel has a 30% bonus. They both do. So at least they'll research a bit faster. Cryogenic transport at least doesn't take that long. So it's going to finish in two years, which will be good. And then what I'll probably do is move all the labs over to Laura over here so she can finish her nuclear thermal engine. Okay, so we're not doing, we're not going to be training people up particularly well, but we're going to power through this tech that we really will be looking for. Uh, nuclear thermal engine is going to finish quite quickly, actually. It's going to finish first. Oh, excellent. Okay, yeah, I'm going to be happy with that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to advance time. We're going to finish those techs. Um, I might queue up some more research after that, depending on how things are looking. We're going to complete some of these things. Um, and we're going to start working on the freighters. We're going to want the freighters done before, you know, this stuff gets done. Now, actually, it doesn't really particularly matter. We're going to want the freighters done at some point in here because we're going to want to use the freighters to move this stuff around. And my plan will be to build two freighters and probably one direct cryogenic colony ship. The, um, so we'll come back. Next episode, we'll be designing that, building that. We will be setting up some strip mining of some of these planets and or asteroids and or comets. And we will move towards setting up a colony on Mars or the moon. One or the other. Moon would be, you know, faster to move things to, but Mars is cool, right? We'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time.